demonstration of the popliteal force. This is the prone cadaver. This is the left leg. I am demonstrating from the left side. The camera person is on the right side. Popliteal fossa is a diamond-shaped space in the back of the knee. Therefore, it's got a supralateral boundary, supramedial boundary, infralateral boundary, inframedial boundary. So let's take the supralateral boundary. Supralateral boundary is the structure which I have lifted up here. This is the biceps femoris, the long head and the short head. The tendon gets inserted onto the head of the fibula. So this is the supralateral boundary. Supramedial boundary are the combined these two muscles. This tendinous structure that you see here, this is the semi-tendinosus and this fleshy portion is the semi-membranosus. So these muscles are actually muscles of the posterior compartment, they are the hamstring muscles. Now let's come to the infralateral and the inframedial boundary. This is the infralateral boundary. This is formed by the lateral belly of the gastrocnemius. This is the gastrocnemius muscle. And the infralateral boundary is also formed by this small muscle here, which I have separated. This is the plantaris muscle. So this is the infralateral boundary. The inframedial boundary is formed by this muscle here. This is the medial belly of the gastrocnemius. So therefore the popliteal fossa is diamond shaped. It's got an apex above, it's got an apex below. Roof of the popliteal fossa is formed by the popliteus fascia, which is a continuation of the fascia, uh, latter of the thigh, which continues on to the fascia cruris, or the fascia of the leg. Floor of the popliteal fossa. Now we have retracted the structures, contents of the popliteal fossa to show the floor. As you can see, the floor is rather deep. And this whole cavity was filled with a lot of fat, which has been removed along with it, the popliteal lymph nodes. The upper part of the floor is composed of the popliteal surface of the femur. And we can feel the bone here. Then we have the posterior capsule of the knee joint here in the middle. And further lower down, we can see just a little bit of the muscle here. This is the popliteus muscle. The popliteus muscle is covered by the popliteus fascia, which is reinforced by the insertion of the semimembranosus. So these three structures form the floor of the popliteal fossa. Now let us take a look at the contents of the popliteal fossa. The most important contents, apart from fat and lymph nodes, are the following three neurovascular structures in this order. Going from lateral to medial and going from superficial to deep, the same three order follows. We have the nerve, this is the sciatic nerve. Popliteal vein, popliteal artery. So going from lateral to medial is nerve vein artery. Going from superficial to deep is the nerve vein artery. Deep means it is more anterior because we are in the posterior aspect. So let's say a few quick words about each of them. Let's start with the nerve. This is the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve is continuing from the gluteal region as we can see here. And it is running in the back of the thigh between the superficial group of muscles that is the hamstring group of muscles and the deep which is the hamstring component of the adductor magnus. And as it comes down somewhere in the region of the back of the thigh which is a little variable usually at the junction of the upper two-thirds and lower one-third but in this case it is lower down it divides into its two components the common fibular and the tibial. The common fibular runs laterally under cover of the biceps femoris and then it winds behind the head of the fibula and then it winds around the neck of the fibula and then it goes into the leg. So this is the common fibula. In this location, the common fibula nerve is liable to be injured, in which case the patient will have foot drop. Now let's come to the tibial nerve. The tibial nerve goes straight across from one apex of the popliteal fossa to the lower apex. And the tibial nerve is the larger component, the preaxial division, and you can see it is dividing into multiple branches. The tibial nerve supplies the branches, muscular branches, to all the muscles of the leg and the foot. Both the tibial and the common fibula also give a cutaneous branch, and one of those cutaneous branches we have retained. This is the lateral sural cutaneous branch of the common fibula, and you can see that here. This supplies a little bit of the skin of the back of the leg, and this then gives a contribution to a branch from the tibial nerve, the medial sural cutaneous nerve, and the two then unite and they form what is known as the sural nerve, which runs on the back of the leg. Now let's retract this and come to the next structure, the popliteal artery and the popliteal vein. So let's start from the place where they enter the popliteal fossa. I'm putting my finger in a space here, and you can see it is disappearing. This space is the adductor hiatus. It's a space bounded by the tendon of the adductor magnus, that is the adductor tendon, and the insertion of the adductor magnus to the linea aspera. And this opening is the adductor hiatus, and from here, 
the femoral artery and the femoral vein, they enter the popliteal fossa and then become known as popliteal artery and popliteal vein. So this is the beginning. In this place, we have a very important clinical correlation. This adductor hiatus is a potential site of entrapment of the artery. I've lifted up the popliteal artery now and the veins will also be accompanying the arteries. We will remember superior, inferior, medial, lateral. So, we have superior lateral, genicular. We have superior lateral genicular, superior medial genicular. Let's come to inferior. We have inferior medial genicular, this one. And we have inferior lateral genicular. And we have a middle genicular. And we can see the middle genicular here. So these five supply the knee joint. And the superior medial lateral and the inferior medial lateral, they also participate in the genicular anastomosis by contributions from the top two and one from below. So these are the branches of the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery, then as it runs down through the popliteal fossa, it can get entrapped, apart from the adductor hiatus, it can get entrapped in two other places. Let's see them. One site of entrapment is under the medial head of the gastrocnemius. And this is a well-documented location and you can see the popliteal artery runs very close to the medial head of the gastrocnemius and it can get entrapped here. And this is a big classification which is collectively called PAES, popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. In one of the stages of that syndrome, even the popliteal vein can get entrapped. And the third place where the popliteal artery can get entrapped is, I'm going to put my finger at the lower apex. And this is the place where the popliteal artery and the vein, they disappear from the popliteal fossa and they come into the leg. And they go under a tendinous arch of the soleus muscle like this. So that is the third place where the popliteal artery can get entrapped. So to summarize, popliteal artery can get entrapped with the adductor hiatus. It can get entrapped under the medial head of the gastrocnemius and it can get entrapped under the tendinous arch of soleus. Three sites of popliteal artery entrapment. Now let's take a look at this structure here. This is a very important superficial cutaneous vein on the back of the leg. This is the short saphenous vein. This starts from the lateral aspect of the foot and then it climbs up. And this is accompanied by the sural nerve which I mentioned earlier. As it comes up, it pierces the popliteus fascia and it opens into the popliteal vein. And we can see that opening into the popliteal vein. This is used as a landmark to identify the sural nerve on the back of the leg because the sural nerve is a cutaneous nerve which can be used for nerve grafting. So these are the contents that we can see here. Let's mention a few important clinical correlations at this stage. Posterior dislocation of the knee joint can injure one or more of these structures, especially the tibial nerve, the popliteal vein or the popliteal artery. Popliteal artery aneurysm in the popliteal fossa is also well documented. Aneurysm is a localized dilatation of the popliteal artery and can produce a pulsatile swelling in the back of the knee. Then we can have a cyst filled with synovial fluid in the cavity of the popliteal fossa and that is known as a popliteal cyst or a Baker cyst which usually comes from the knee joint or from one of the bursae around the knee joint and it fills up and collects here. This is an axial MRI through the popliteal fossa and the knee to show a popliteal Morant Baker cyst. The boundary, as I mentioned, is the semi-membranosus and the semi-tendinosus. The semi-tendinosus insertion is rather unique and it resembles the foot of a goose and we have lifted it up here. It is composed of three tendons. One muscle from the anterior compartment, the sartorius, muscle from the medial compartment, the gracilis, and a muscle from the posterior compartment, the semi-tendinosus. And all these three get inserted out of the upper aspect of the tibia in the shape of a foot of a goose and that is called pesanserinus. There can be a bursa between this and the bone and that is known as the anserine bursa. The semimembranosus, which also forms a supramedial boundary of the popliteal fossa, as it gets inserted, it gives expansion to the posterior capsule of the knee joint and it strengthens the popliteus fascia. There may be a bursa between the semimembranosus and the medial head of the gastrocnemius. And we can see a little bit of the remnant of the bursa here. This is the semimembranosus bursa. The popliteus muscle, which I showed you, forms the floor of the popliteal fossa. This also has a bursa. There is penetration to the capsule of the knee joint and that is another popliteus bursa and that communicates with the knee joint. The medial head of the gastrocnemius which forms the inframedial boundary also has a bursa which communicates with the knee joint and that is known as a gastrocnemius bursa. So these are all the various bursa which are in relation to the knee joint 
and these per se can also leak fluid into the popliteal region and they can contribute to the popliteal cyst which I mentioned. So these are all the structures and the clinical correlations that I wanted to mention about the popliteal fossa. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjay Sanya signing out. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day.